I've been trying to find a solution for state management, animations and code organization all in one thing. But the thing is that I was making a mistake. I was searching for kind of a revolutionary idea. And that was my mistake. Instead, I could just fix it with just a little bit of tweaking in the traditional animation system. First, let me just explain how the traditional animation system actually work. And let me just show you a little bit of an example and I'll just come back. We have the two states here, run and idle. When the run state transitions to idle state, there will be a condition, not moving. Then the idle state transitions to run state with the condition obviously is moving. Then we add a new state like jump. When the jump state transitions to the idle state, the condition will be not jumping and not moving. For a run, it would be moving but not jumping. Then when we transition to the jump state, the condition would be is jumping. So we form a little bit of a system. But the problem arises when we add more state to the system. As a solution, I made a little bit of a system. So let me explain how it works. Same as before, we have idle run and jump states. These are connected to a state manager and obviously with a condition. Now the state manager transitions between all of these states based on the conditions and now all the states don't have to transition to the other states by themselves. Instead, the manager does this stuff. So it becomes super simple. Now let's understand the code and let me explain how it works in action. Now let's understand how each state's code is managed. This is a sample script having all the functions that every state should have. First of all, we have a reference to the player which is equal to none and then we'll, in the ready function we'll get reference to the player. It doesn't matter how you get the reference to the player or the object that the state machine is connected to. It's totally up to you, so I just leave that to you. Next up we have the intercondition function. All the conditions written inside the intercondition function should return true or false. If they return true, then the specified state is entered. It doesn't matter which state it is, if the condition inside the intercondition function are true, then we enter that state. Next up, we have the update function. All the code written inside the update function is executed in the physics process delta function. Now, any code that you want to execute as long as the state is active is written inside the update function. Under the update function, we have the exit condition function. This is an optional function that you can add conditions to. For example, if I want a condition that should be fulfilled if we want to exit that state, I'll write it under this. If it's set to true, then no condition for exiting the state will be added. Next up, we have the onInter function. This function is called once as soon as the player enters this state. It's pretty self-explanatory and it's quite useful. Now we have the onExit function. Code inside the onExit function is executed as soon as you exit that specified state. Keep in mind that any state that exists in your game should have all of these functions. The reference to the player and all of the other functions. These are mandatory and might give errors if not exist in the state function. It doesn't matter if they have or don't have code because you can just set them to pass if you don't want to add any code. Now let's understand the main FSM script, the manager script that handles all of the transitions and conditioning. Now first of all we have a variable which is initial state. Now we have a variable called current state. And that we in the ready function we set the initial state. In the initial state we set it to equal to red so it's going to be red. 
In the physics process delta function, we said if there is a current state, then we'll just run the update function of the current state. Then under that we'll check for state transition. Now in the set initial state function, we get the initial state using get node or null. We use the name of the initial state to check for it. Then we check if current state, uh, we'll just call the on inter function of the current state. If no state is found, we'll just push an error. In the state transition function, bear with me, it's a little bit complicated. We use a for loop. We first loop through all children, then we'll check if uh, any state wants to be entered, and we'll check for its inter condition. If it's true, we'll check for the exit condition of current state. If there is a condition, the condition needs to be true. If it's set to true, then we just call the on exit function, set to a new state, and called the on inter function of the newly setted state. You might find it a little bit more complicated, but you don't have to worry about that. You can just download the source file from the description and use it in your project. Uh, let me explain how to use it in your project and let me just show you a little sample too. I have a little scene here and if uh, I just uh, run it, you can see that uh, when I press these keys that I have bonded, the thing just changes the color. The, yeah, the ghetto logo changes to red, blue and uh, green colors and uh, it is set it up using the state system. It's just a basic example, you can make any complex things you want. So in the hierarchy we have the FSM, then we have all the states as the children. Now if we go to the, see the code for of the children, it's pretty similar. Uh, let me just go here. Now you can see we have reference to the animation and uh, in the intercondition function we check for input for a key then in the on inter function we just set an animation and also we just print out these things to indicate what's happening and uh, uh, all of the scripts here are mostly the same there's not too much change here we just check for input and then we just print out some stuff and change the animation the real advantage of using this system is that now all of the code is contained inside the scripts for the state and no other code is needed. And it's really simple, it's really easy and you can use it in any kind of projects. So I would like to thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe if it's useful and till then goodbye.